Hello guys, in the last video we created this person class and we briefly mentioned this concept of inheritance. Uh, what inheritance does is it allows you to create a new class which can inherit everything of another class that exists in your, your project or your application. Uh, so with this person class we're going to extend it by creating a new class called student and the student class will inherit all of the properties and methods and everything from this person class. Um, the reason we're inheriting from person is because a student is in fact a person but a student is also more than a person so it makes sense that we would use inheritance to express this in our programs so just like last time we're going to add a new class and we'll call this student and the first thing we're going to want to do with our student class is make it public so we can use it and then we're going to instantly say that this inherits from the person class. Um, the syntax is really simple. You just whack a colon on the end of your class name and then specify the class that you're inheriting. Um, next thing we're going to do is just add a single property to extend the person class. So one thing we know about students is they are on a course. So we'll say public string and we'll just make it a string and we'll say course. So getter and setter. So now we're able to create an instance of student which will inherit a name, an age, and uh, will already override the base method for to string. So let's add a constructor for this class. So just like before, we'll say public student. We'll open and close our parentheses. And um, you'll see here what this is saying that the person class does not contain a constructor that takes zero arguments that's because last time we set our only constructor up to accept a name and an age so at a minimum our constructor for student needs to do the same so the way that we do this is we say string name int age and then we just go a bit further than that we do another colon at the end here and we say base because we want to call the base constructor which is again this one we created here and we want to pass in those variables so we'll say name because it's asking for a name and we'll say age because the base constructor asks for an age so then as you call this constructor the compiler will jump straight to the base method here this method will call with the arguments passed and then it will redirect into these uh, squiggly brackets here and it will run anything extra. So what we've added extra is a course. So we'll add another string uh, a variable to the constructor. So we'll call, we'll just say course, following the same patterns we did before, lowercase variable names uh, linking to uh, uppercase instant variable names. And we'll just say course equals course. Now you'll notice how we didn't have to say name equals name, although we could if we wanted to, if we wanted to override something there. Um, but we didn't have to because that was handled for us by the base constructor across here. So this is a way of reusing other code that you've got in your project without you know repeating yourself over and over again, which is good. We never want to do that. Um, so that's that's the most basic extension we could do. We've extended the constructor and we've added a new field. Um, we populated the, the, the property we've added with a new parameter. Another thing I want to touch on briefly is override. So you'll see in the previous tutorial we overrode the toString method and that's because at the very core level everything inherits from object and object in, uh, implements this toString method. Um, the way that we would allow overridden methods to happen in our programs is we could say public and we'll say, what should we create? Public string um, salutation. And we'll make this a property, so the usual. Yeah, well actually, no, we'll keep it simple. So get, well, let's just get rid of this. So say get set. And then the, the thing we do extra to say, hey, if you're going to inherit this class, you can override this particular uh, variable or property, is we say public virtual. 
and this will then allow us in our student class to do something like this so we'll say public override and if you just put space at the end there it'll show you all of the stuff that you're able to override so we know that to string is um, a member of the object and it's actually also a member of person as well um, we've already overridden that and we're happy with that but you'll also see salutation is here and we can override that if we want so let's override this we're not too bothered about a setter actually and that was my bad in the previous file I probably should have left that out it's a force of habit so we'll say that salutation is something you can only get and we'll override that and we'll say return let's see what should we say hello comma space name Ooh. and so all the salutation will do is it'll just create a string that says hello in the person's name and this is being overridden from the base one and we'll just fill this out a bit so it looks a bit more realistic and we'll say return hello so this base person class implements salutation and all it does is it says return hello but maybe for the student you'd want it to do something different so we would just return hello and the person's name we we're still able to use this student class anywhere we would have used the person class so even here where we've got a list of person we could even add another person to that list but that person could actually be a student so we could say new student and we'll give them a name John an age 21 but we'll also say that he's on the computer science level one and because student is actually a type of person this person list will allow you to put it in which is uh, another benefit of inheritance is you can always deal with the lowest common denominator which in this case is person um, and you could loop through it and because person is because student is a person you can treat it like one and you know at a later time if you, if you want to check you could say oh if p which is the current person is a student then we could do something different else might just say in here um, text box one dot text text box one dot text plus um, and in this instance we'll use the salutation so we'll open and close the parentheses and we'll say p as student because we want to reference p as a student rather than a person and then we'll just call the salutation method that we had before if we go ahead and run this you'll see that it looped through all three val uh, values in the list the first two weren't students so it just did everything as normal like we did in the last tutorial but the last one was a student so it pulled in the salutation rather than you know pulling in the two string method um, and that's pretty much the basics of inheritance uh, if you have any questions just leave me a comment down below and i'll try and get back to you as soon as i can uh, if you like this and you want to see more please subscribe thank you